Well, hello, my beautiful friend, Miss Brittany. How are you doing today? I hope good. All right, so yesterday I put your energy into my card deck and then I went to sleep and then I meant to do this video like eight hours ago. But I got caught up with my kid not going to sleep and then, you know, dishes and stuff. So here's your video. I apologize for your waiting. Oh, so before you got your past, current, and possible future, remember when we get to the future, it is not set in stone. It can change at any time you so choose it, all right? And then I've got a fourth pile here. It's all the energy between past, present, and possible future. Now each card has a clar has three clarifiers, and I also have the bottom of the decks and the story within the decks. All right, let's figure out what ha what was going on with you. So you were trying to solve a mystery. It had a lot to do with this um, it had a lot to do with this um, Capricorn Taurus or Virgo, Cancer Scorpio or Pisces, right? Maybe you're dealing with two knights. I know you are stepping into one of them. You're dealing with one of them's a puppet master, all right, and you're trying to figure out which one which one was pulling your strings and I know that you um, you're, get, you're working really hard and you're getting what you want out of a situation but you're not getting your needs met and that's what matters most is your needs because if you can't get your needs met then you're not able to go anywhere so that's where you were in the past the current, you are waiting. You're waiting for a toxic situation to end. And you're waiting for passion, a new beginning in one way or another, right? Someone has passion for you. What you really want and what you're doing right now is you are trying to release all the mental anguish of the toxic energy. All right, I apologize about that. Um, my kid removed his headphones from his class and his teacher's voice, I don't know why, but it hurts my ears. And I didn't want her being in the reading anyway. Cause she, she's in the middle of teaching a class, so I apologize for that noise. Now, um, took me a few minutes to get back to you, but I see that you're trying to remove the toxicity and just be happy and content with your family. All right. And you're just, you're waiting. You're waiting for the toxic energy to dissipate. Now, the possible future, remember, not set in stone, is that you are going to go, I don't know why that's upside down, but um, you're going to be paying attention to to your intuition. All right, you're gonna be paying attention to your dreams. Now, you are gonna be so overrun with stuff, okay? Now, what I mean by that is, yeah, in a regular tarot deck, this card actually does mean, you know, 10 swords that are creating pocket change holes in the person's body that's laying on the ground, right? In my deck, yeah, it's disaster, rotten, ruin, you name it, destruction. But how I perceive it is completely different. I feel that people keep taking and taking and taking from you, and you're just trying to find balance, possibly with a Sagittarius. But you are being very um, inquisitive, headstrong, and observant as a Libra. Not to mention you're probably dealing with a Libra, Gemini, or Aquarius. Are you a Libra? I don't know what you are. I don't know what your sign is. I just felt like you you could have Libra in your placement, maybe. If that be the case, and it was your birthday this month, happy birthday. <laughs> now, all the energy that ties together is that you are dealing in Taurus energy, right? You're waiting on um, word. Because 
maybe some what someone said. Actually, I think what someone says said because you were waiting, right? You're waiting on a word, and what they said kind of shook you a little bit and sent you into uh, rest and recovery. You know, four swords, where you're kind of like retreating and just trying to not only take care of yourself but lick your wounds, basically, right? And you're kind of stuck in your head a little bit, and you're just you're you're fighting with someone now. I don't know where this is in your deck, but as you're fighting with them, your relationship's crawling away, right? A friendship. Now you are you are getting a high five from the undead. This is like my favorite card. Okay, which is is <laughs> a high five from the undead. That's not even that's cool enough for me. As long as I don't try to eat my brains, I think we're good, right? <laughs> And then it talks about um, world domination, you know, getting financial help from someone. It's like a blessing in disguise. Now you have choices. And you are somewhere along the line choosing to be able to sit down with someone you had issues with. Possibly an Aries Lee or Sag who had a lot of growing to do. And you saw that there was... A destiny awaiting you, and you decided you were gonna grab that by the horns. I saw, I apologize for the background noise. Who knew my kid could be so excited for school? <laughs> so bottom of the the Jane Austen deck is death card, right? But you're transforming. That doesn't necessarily mean you're dying or anything. You're just transforming from um away from temptation and discovering that your material wealth is going to help you adapt to who's willing to betray you and who's not. Does that make sense? This is somewhere... These just is a story somewhere in your deck. I don't know where each of these cards lay between your past, present, and future. I do know that you were seeking security in regards to your emperor and you were traveling Right? Decluttering your brain cells, trying to get rid of all the drama. Because ultimately you want quality, not quantity, and you were seeking stability. But you've got a lot of anxiety, especially since you stepped into Empress mode. You're just trying to keep calm, cool, and collective, but there's a revelation that there, that someone charming, you know, is heading your way. Now you're finding clarity within the fact that you are going to, um, so your wish fulfillment is to continue to be creative, right? And you're getting the courage to take that in moderation, which is like taking steps little by little. I think it has a lot to do with the fact that you are afraid of disappointment and, you know, your energy is a little bit low, but you've got a lot of options and choices and... You're just trying to seek balance. You are, however, being very perceptive in regards to the positive energy coming from your work ethic, right? You're working your ass off. And you are accomplishing a lot, but you are being very, very cautious in regards to a lot of challenges because you don't want to, you know, dive in head first. You are being generous and keeping your emotions in control, though. And that's good that you're not going crazy. I mean, you're probably mentally, right? Like, where you're just like, you can't. <laughs> you're just like, why isn't anybody listening? I've said this shit a thousand times. Nobody ever listens to me. But then, then you stop saying that and you're realizing, well, it doesn't matter. And, you know, I said my piece, and if they're not listening, that's on them. If there's an exam down the road, they're going to bomb it, like, hardcore, right? The exam of life. Now, you are going to be starting a new beginning, and you are preparing for that journey. And you have awoken yes and since you've awoken you stepped into um, introspection right you're paying close attention whether or not you want to continue to love and share your destiny with someone right but you are afraid of being rejected so you're being assertive or you know assertive in your efforts right you want to share your traditions but you're contemplating whether you want to collaborate with someone else, probably in work. Now you are celebrating a completion. Oh yes, you are. 
right? And you're finding happiness while keeping yourself growing internally. And as you're growing, you're not only, you know, like moving, you're growing your skills, you're honing in your ability to do what you do best. Yeah. shuffle this real quick. I haven't shuffled in a while, as you can tell. I suck at it. <laughs> okay, what's going on in the zombie deck? So you were dealing with um, heartache, jealousy, or a form of loss, right? Could have been any of those one, three characters. Uh, like, it could be those, or it could be one of the three that I always say. Like, the, the first one of the three would be like, you're cheating, they're cheating. Shit like that, right? Bringing a third party in. The second one would be that they're bitching about you to their family, friends, and whoever will listen, or vice versa, right? And the third one is that something takes priority over your relationship. Like, drugs, alcohol, um, any really form of substance abuse. Video games, sex, pornography, gambling, being a workaholic, and even money. Right? So, this was somewhere in your timeline. But you were making a group effort, even though you were struggling. And you're dealing with a Libra Gemini Aquarius. So, someone came in and shook you with words, right? Think of it like this. Imagine like you're the ocean. You're all calm. Like close your eyes and imagine. Okay, you're all calm, and the sun's beating on you. It's warm. You hear the seagulls and the waves. It's just so nice, right? And then out of the blue, out of nowhere, no, I'm just kidding, not out of nowhere. From the left, <laughs> from the left to the right, <laughs> from the left to the right, like moving. Um, this knight of swords comes in as in the form of a storm cloud, right? And it grows and grows and man, they grow fast too. If you ever sit and watch the little cloud expand, it's amazing. Like I did once at night and it just, whew, it was it was pretty awesome actually. But back on topic. So this expands so fast and suddenly it starts to rain and get cold and your, your water's being shook back and forth. It's a hurricane, right? There's um, like a smog. Does smog even fall in the ocean? I feel like it would because it's like an unclear. For some reason, in me saying this, it just feels like it'd be like foggy or whatever, right? It's just horrible, rainy. Well, I mean, horrible to other people. I think it's beautiful. But, you know, there's electricity filtering from the clouds to you and back up like through the water and back up, right? And then just as soon as it came, it left instantly. Whew. All right? And it's just like everything finally calms down. It stops raining. The sun shines again. You hear the waves crashing on rocks and the seagulls. And then you sit there and you're just like, you're still rocking heavy though, right? Now, are you the same person or body of water you were before that happened? Most people would be like, oh yeah, there's water, there's water. No, like more water was added to you. There was electricity shaking you up, you know. There was so much. You were altered by something that was said by a Libra, Gemini, or Aquarius. That, or you said that to someone who's brave, equal, and has lack of emotion in regards to it. Now you are fighting for what's yours, all right? You're competing, challenges, persistence. But the thing is, is that they want what's yours, and you're just like beating them back with a bone. You're like, ha! On guard, get back, 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 you wildish, boorish, feet, fiends. Right? <laughs> and they get close and you whack them in the third eye. <laughs> right? <laughs> they're like, ow, I'm going to go tell my mommy on you. And you're like, go ahead. I'm a writer. <laughs> I won't imagine this weird shit. Anyway, um, 
So this card, you know, not only are you defending what's yours, but it's also telling you or telling me to tell you that um, you are in competition. Hell yes, but you should be only in a competition with yourself to better yourself, right? So basically, like, do a bucket list or do a, you know, do that also before you get old. Like, do it because you got one life to live and you might as well have fun stories to tell when you're old and wrinkly like me. But... Like, write down your goals, and then the mini goals to get to those, like the steps, right? And as soon as you get that done, then, like, you can knock those off, and then suddenly, boom, you've got where you want to go. And you know, you're not defined to stay in one career for the rest of your life. You can actually branch out and do what you want to do. And I feel that you want to become an entrepreneur and start something. You are. You're going to start something amazing. I just know it. But you're also indecisive, especially in regards to this Cancer Scorpio or Pisces, bit of a party girl, which has you up in your emotions. you all up in your emotions and you've got options but you need to make a decision because if you don't make the decision a decision will be made for you all right and if a decision is made for you I know for a fact you're not gonna like that decision because you're a boss baby you're a boss now someone is watching you all right could be living or could be deceased um I swear in the last, last like, a couple weeks, um, this card has changed so much for me. It just, I don't even see it as just, like, okay, so when I first introduced this card, the story behind it is that it's a person that's hiding behind a bush watching you with love in their heart, right? But the thing is, is that when you mix that with the devil card, it kind of goes into from a soft stalker to a hard stalker, and this one lady, she was like, Oh, any form of stalker is a bad stalker. I'm like, not necessarily. I mean, imagine you're back in school, right? And you're sitting there. And a cute person walks in. Or a cute little... If you're in school, a kid your age, right? You know, you've got a... Suddenly it's like, boom, crush time, right? And you've you got to know their name, so you wait for their name. And then the teacher finally says their name, and you're so excited. And you're like, oh, I wonder what they like and dislike. And so you're trying to get to know them, but you're shy. So what are you going to do? You're going to listen and wait and pay attention. Okay, soft stalker with no ill will intended. Does that make sense? So that's what this card is. But the last the last Libra read I did um, actually shifted it for me. So there is a deceased loved one watching your back. Okay, and they're they're very calm and happy and quiet, but they have a lot to say to you. Okay, and I think it has a lot to do with the fact that you are stepping into the King of Wands energy, right? Or you're dealing with an Aries, Leo, or Sag. Now, this is someone who's reliant, you know, an entrepreneur, very optimistic. So I don't know what the hell he was doing in his story, but he blew off his leg. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> which I'm still confused about. Like, I gotta get a hold of the creators of this deck and be like, what was he doing to blow off his leg? <laughs> so I've got so many possibilities running through my head, and I'm like, how do you even... <laughs> what the fuck? But instead of whining about it, all right, you're gonna become an entrepreneur just like him, building yourself a new leg and moving on. And you're going to be traveling in the form of cancer energy, right? And you're completing tasks. You're definitely traveling. Oh, yes. Now, you are dealing with an Aries, Leo, or Sag. A Knight of Wands. Now, in my deck, this card, he's the opposite of what he means in a regular deck, okay? So, in a regular deck, he's the player. And Wands always signify, like, the male human phallic, which is penis. So, you know, they always assume um, this is like a very passionate, only sex, but he means so much more. And, you know, he'll, 
he's very bold and impetuous, right? He's an adventurer. He will rush forward and get you a goodie bag and bring it back. Well, that's just material things. Well, at least he's coming back. I mean, it's not just sexual energy. Granted, there is a lot of sexual energy here. But you know what I mean? He's thoughtful. And that's what you want in a partner. Now, if you had the Knight of Cups, which I did see somewhere. I just don't know where. Oh, hold on. Going back to your... Past, present, and possible future energy. Oh, there he is. He's the player card. This was your past, I believe. Right? I believe he was the one manipulating you. So, for his story, is, is he's, you know, he's adventurous. You know, he's romantic. He'll get you to fall in love with him, and as soon as he has your heart, he'll skip out. Hold on a minute. Sorry about that. My kid was excited that he finished his class, his first class. Anyway, so that's that's kind of the gist of what was going on with him. Even though I lost my train of thought. But you are, you are working hard. Right? You are also stepping into the full energy, which means that um, you're releasing a lot of mental baggage. You went through a lot, so you also, okay, so you, here's the thing with tarot decks. I'm probably confusing you with all this energy, right? This is a journey, okay? I don't, it's a journey. Now, you have to go through a lot of shit to get to become the emperor, all right? This isn't just talking about you finding your emperor, okay? The, your emperor also has to have empress energy as well. So what I mean by that is regardless of what's between your legs, whether you're male or female, we all have two energies, okay? Female energy and male energy, and we try to level those up. Think of it like Donkey Kong. Yeah, where he's throwing the barrels down on the very top level, and they're just coming down. And it's like barrels of karma and lessons, right? It's your mini tower moments, and you can jump over them, go around. No, I'm just kidding. You have to go over them in that. But... In real life, you'd probably go around or avoid, or you know what? If you felt like it, you, you'd probably you'd go head on. Be like, bring it on, biatch. Take you down to Chinatown and kick you around, kapow. Right? But you gotta go through each of those um, levels to get to the top. Now, you're not gonna wake up as the Empress or Emperor overnight. You have to also go through each of the each of the levels of the tarot. Does that make sense? So, you know, there's the page, the knight, the queen. Dude, those are like the levels. And, you know, what's what's crazy is if you watch a lot of tarot readings, they always say how, um, how, oh, the other person's with a karmic. Your person was a karmic, blah, 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 right? And you're like, that jerk <laughs> sucks to be him, right? But if you really sit down and think about it, we're all someone's karmic in someone's story. That karmic's not a karmic forever. I mean, unless they are doomed to repeat their lessons. I'm just saying that, like, we have to level up and grow. And for, we're always forever growing. There are people who will be, be stuck for quite a while. And they won't understand why they're stuck in that cycle. But they are. So you've reached not only Empress mode, but Emperor mode. And you, you know, you're able to now bring order and control out of chaos, right? That's also Aries energy. You'd be dealing with an Aries as well. And you want to give your cup of love to someone. But first, you got to get that snow shovel. Go inside of your head, you know, like, climb up through the nose hole. <laughs> go, go down the corridor behind the eyeball. And open up the eardrums where the brain is. And pull out your snow shovel and start shoveling those boxes of um, drama and anxiety and stuff. And then hucking them out your window. <laughs> well, where's the window at? It's your eardrum. Yeah. Because that's what you're doing. You're moving on to calmer waters. And you're being 
you know, you're dealing with someone who's also sac sacrificing their time and energy, but you are also doing that as well. You're, you're very um, intuitive and caring and loving. Now, you are being told to pay attention to your dreams. See? Huh. You are being talked to. This is also Pisces energy. There's shit going on around you and you don't know the answers to it. They're trying to bring you into the loophole and fill you in on all that confusing energy. And underneath your bed, you got the dead here. So it could be actual dead people you're not related to. That's why I always go dead and then ancestors, <laughs> um, angels, God, the divine, whoever you know you pray to. They're, they're trying to send you messages in your dream. All right. And the message is that you're going to run into a, a Capricorn, Taurus, or Virgo who will have plans for a new beginning, okay? Maybe it's someone from the past because it shows past energy here. Now, this doesn't always mean X, but it does mean that this person will be able to help you find closure, okay? You're thinking about them as well. Maybe maybe you you have to find closure and if they, even if they don't come back you're thinking about them and just thinking about them and processing like calling judgment on it right accepting responsibility for what's going on or what happened from you and realizing that they're never going to apologize or they are you know whatever where it lays right that um just thinking about it and realizing that you have it's okay you know you can't change the past but the future you can change because you have free will right unless you have a time machine then you can go back in time and, and then slap them or something I don't know but they're gonna help you find clarity and you're gonna be completing a lot of tasks which will lead you to recognition for hard work and skill now now that's really great actually because you deserve that you've been working really hard look he's getting his hat head padded he's like good boy and he's like my name's Ben I'm a bad man Ben I'm a good boy throw me the bone and he's like getting 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 again and getting it and the kids are like wow mom I've never seen a no-legged skeleton run for a bone before <laughs> oh God, there was there was this doctor. I don't know if it. I, I know it was a horror story or whatever. It kind of reminds me of it though. Um, a doctor that was playing with genetics a long ass time ago, like when they were still doing lobotomies on people, right? Stuff like that. I don't know if it was a novel or a real person. I think I saw pictures of the science experiments, like where they put two heads on one dog, or was trying to crossbreed and stitch animals together in the weirdest of ways. But um, and they lived too for a little while, and then they died, which is horrible, horrible torture for those animals. And then that, that cat and dog who didn't expect to be cat dog on Nickelodeon, yeah. So that's kind of what it reminds me of is like someone was playing with um, genetics. They were, they were. All right. I paused you again. I'm going to do that quite a bit so that you don't have to deal with me shuffling a whole lot. Um. So I asked you what your favorite number was, and this is the reason why, all right? So you're trying to think positive in regards to a tower moment. Now, you know your destiny's there, but you are kind of just pampering yourself. Now, there is a temptation, but you have been severing ties from them. Now, you're trying to find balance, find your emperor and authority, right? And your authority, your emperor, or what you are telling yourself is that you're not... I mean, your emperor, I think that your destiny is to find something that feeds your soul and pampers you. Because currently, you get what you want, but not what you need. And there's a difference. Alright, you need food, you need water, you need love and care and understanding. Wants are completely different than needs. 
and I feel that like money can't buy everything unless you buy that stripper down at the mall that comes with free hugs and compliments <laughs> I made that up. There's no such thing. But wouldn't it be great if there was? We're like, can I rent her for, or him for a day? Well, what do you need him for? I need lots of hugs and comfort. <laughs> and someone would come for me and tell me how great I am. Well, guess what? <laughs> you don't need that. And you don't need to you don't need to pay for anything as absurd as that because you are loved and cared for. All right? You just feel like you're kind of needing something more. Now you are sharing your balance and harmony with people. You are. You are waiting for the cavalry to arrive and your security is being tested by a uh, toxic energy. It is. Now these will lay somewhere in your between your past, present, and future as well, alright? Now you decided you want your material wealth and you are going to go for it, right? You are going to go for it in moderation, especially in regards to keeping your energy up and your passions. You're being very perceptive, especially in regards to this boss lady, Capricorn, Taurus, or Virgo, right? She's the type of woman who hired you, right? You've just kind of been riding your ass lately, and you don't know why. And you're starting to think that maybe she hates you. <laughs> but in reality, if she hired you and she's always on your ass, she sees how great you are and you're going above and beyond. And those people that are above you, between her and you, aren't doing her justice like you could be. Alright? If that makes sense. She sees that in the future, she'll just press a button and that person who is above you, that you're going to take their position, will like fall through a hole. Kind of like it, uh, Mr. Burns from Simpsons, right? And you're like, yes! And, you know, there goes their box of of stuff from their desk with them, right? And you go in and you're like, okay, this is my office now. I'm going to redecorate. I need to go to Home Depot or somewhere, a hardware store, right? And then I, I need some nails and boards because I'm boarding up that hole because I ain't never going to let her do that to me like they did. She did that to them because I'm going to not only take what I need but offer something great. And you know what's funny is you are destined for greatness. And you are working. You are manifesting. You are building your skills. And you're being bold about it. You are. All right. I'm going to pause and then we'll move on to the spreads. All right. We're going to be doing the broken heart spread. The central issue of your relationship is that you're paying attention to your material wealth, and yet there's bickering and fighting over it. Okay? You're fighting over your finances a little bit. How you see the other person is they're disappointing you, especially with their toxic energy. Right? They're a little bit possessive, controlling, they have substance abuse problems or something like that, right? Something that kind of throws your scales out of balance. How they see you is they say that you are in your shell, taking life a little bit at a time. Right? You're licking your wounds. Now, the unknown influence on your relationship is that there is going to be happiness as soon as that stops. You know? Stop fighting and, you know, they stop trying to take from you and you guys just work together. Right? Where you want the relationship to go is that you want to travel... And you want to be a little bit possessive with your time and energy, right? You're a little selfish. Probably with them, too. Who can help your relationship is you. All right? And you're going to be doing it in a little bit of a romantic but adventurous and moody way. If that makes sense. But you are, you know, the Nine of Cups. Yeah. The challenges in your relationship is that you are waiting for your courage to build up. The outcome is going to be that you're going to be working hard 
but there will be strings attached and you hate strings attached. Okay. Bottom of the deck is you are going to be very full of anxiety in regards to family, wealth, and being content. Does that make sense? Alright. Let's do the next spread, which is the graveyard spread, or gravestone spread. Alright. Now the central question in your life is whether you are going to get quality rather than quantity, and yes, you are, because you were traveling towards it. It's all you really want is, you know, quality friends. You could be in a room full of thousands of friends, right? And that's a lot of quantity right there, but not all of them will be true. That's the difference between quality and quantity, okay? The unforeseen forces acting on that question is that you are going to be very happy because you are the empress, all right? How other people affect you is that they are having the courage to come to you, and they are being very intuitive using that. Does that make sense? It's like it's like you're a a candle in the in the night, right? You're beckoning them. Now, circumstances is that you are awakening and removing mental baggages. You're awakening to the bullshit and you are moving to calmer waters. Who or what is available to help you is that you are. Because you are going to be sharing, you know, the financial rewards that you are being given. Now, the outcome of that question is that you are going to be accomplishing movement, moving towards expansion right traveling All right bottom of the deck is that you currently are fighting for your stability alright let's move on to the eyeball spread alright now the eyeball now last month you were you were using your intuition you know, to find justice. This month, you are a little bit disappointed in some stuff, and you're moving, you know, you're on the move from troubled relationships and making a change, right? You could just be leaving the drama behind and changing and evolving within as well. Now, the first week is that you're very enthusiastic about this Knight of Wands, right? Aries, Leo, or Sag. Second week is that you are getting energy to say some shit. Third week of this month is you are sharing yourself, even though you're kind of stuck in your head. Now, the fourth week of this month, which I think we're in the fourth week, actually, so... You are, um... Dealing with an emperor, okay, and three of cups. Now, I was talking with this lady about her tarot reading the other night, and she's like, your tarot reading was so off, blah, 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 because I'm not pregnant, right? And I'm like, that card actually means one of four things. One, you just got married. Two, you, you're pregnant, okay, obviously, you just had a baby. Three is that you were working with someone at work on a project to blow your boss's mind. And the fourth, the fourth is that you are creating something at home from scratch. You know, you're an entrepreneur, right? You're going to, maybe you're starting your own business. And you're going to shake up the world as we know it. Now, possibly for next month is you are going to be awakening to the fact that there is going to be a loss. Um heartache and jealousy could be one of those three I believe I talked to you about that the he's cheating she's cheating bringing other people into your relationship because you're bitching about them or the anything toxic going over your relationship I'm sorry I'm yawning it's terrible who bottom of the deck is that you're trying to contemplate the motives behind this Capricorn, Taurus, or Virgo. Distant, hardworking business person. 
um, where they're good with their money but not so good with their words. Maybe a boss. All right, let's move on to the severed head spread. Now, the primary issue in your life right now is that you're wondering if you're going to complete. You're going to complete this. Um, Lesson with this Three of Swords, right? The distant, in the distant past, you were very positive and had a bit of a, you know, luck, fate, destiny, you name it, right? In the recent past, you were working hard for a businessman, right? Someone who, you know, good with their money, not so good with their words. Currently, you are in love, but you're kind of stuck in your head on, on what's going on. In certain aspects. In the immediate future, you want quality, especially in regards to, you're stubborn. You want, you fucking want quality. You ain't gonna take, you know, you've raised your bar, your standards. Okay. The factors that will affect this outcome of this issue is that you are going to be going within and calling judgment. So you're introspecting whether or not to accept responsibility for your part and know that there is going to be karma regardless, okay? Do you want to continue to hold on to what is going on, or do you just want to move on? You know, you're kind of like trying to weigh it out, and you're going to call judgment. Now, the official outcome is that you are going to reject who you're fighting with. You're going to reject the competition, right? You're done fighting. In that aspect, you are afraid... You are afraid of accomplishing something because you're kind of stuck in your head about it, right? You feel like a victim. Lack of action. Victimization and no-win situation. But here's the thing is that you are not a victim, okay? You are a victor. You got this. You are going to be absolutely freaking amazing in anything you do. And you are not alone, even though you feel alone in certain aspects. You're definitely not alone. Alright? I'm all making a mess of my cards. Sorry. Thank you so much for, you know, being a part of our Zodiac family and being patient with me. I appreciate it. And know that you are deeply loved. And if ever you ever need anything, I'm always here. Alright? Just let me know. If you're just bored and want to talk about random shit, I'm cool with that too. I don't have a life. I don't have many friends. <laughs> Actually, I downsize my friends to quality instead of quantity because I don't I don't like drama. I'll help people with a non-judgmental ear, but I don't I don't like to get into drama and I mainly just like my best friend when she complains about her spouse. I let her. And I ask her, well, what do you suppose the meaning, or why do you think he's acting the way he is acting? You know, I'll ask questions that she's not even thinking about. To get her thinking, maybe it's not just him, it's you both. Like, when you sign up to be in a marriage or a relationship or whatever, you're doing that voluntarily. Unless you got a gun to your head, then that's a different story. But, you know, you're going to work together and your stuff. I'm not just, I'm not like, okay, so... Here's a funny example, okay? I was dating this kid in Job Corps <laughs> years ago, right? And I come back from, I come back from, uh, from home from the weekend, right? And my friend, I think her name was Yolanda or something, I don't remember. She was like the president of our dorm or something at the time. And she comes to me and she's like, Sherry, Sherry. I saw your boyfriend, you know, and I was trying to get rid of this guy, right? I couldn't fucking shake him. He just, like, wouldn't leave me the fuck alone. I was trying to get rid of him. But, you know, <laughs> she's like, I saw him coming from a field with another girl, and they had just had sex, and blah, blah, blah. And, I, and she expected me to get mad at her and be like, stay out of my business, you fucking liar. Hoo, 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 right? And, <laughs> and what I said kind of shook her. I was like, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> she's like wait what and I'm like I can't get rid of this dude <laughs> I'm trying to get rid of this dude and I can't get rid of him like no matter where I was he was there I, I, I don't know what it is with Libras and attracting narcissists but like when you try to get rid of someone you just, they don't want to let you go like it's horrible 
<laughs> I actually ran from him back to my dorm and he, and he grabbed me by my hoodie and dragged me back. Caught me by the neck. I was like, ah. <laughs> and, I, and I got him off me and I ran to the dorm and he couldn't go in because it's, he doesn't, it's not his dorm. And then I, um, you know, I took the elevator up <laughs> to my room. He actually, he actually broke my window, um, with rocks and stuff. I was asleep. I went to sleep with headphones on. <laughs> That's a funny story, actually. You want to hear it? <laughs> the movie at time. So, um, the night before, I had came into the room, and my roommate had snuck her boyfriend in, and they were um, islanders, right? And they were really tiny, like five feet, like size five foot people, right? They were kind of adorable. And so, <laughs> And I was rooming with like three other girls, but um, <laughs> for that weekend, I like I saw him in there, and I was like, "Oh, okay. Well, I'm gonna go back out." And then bedtime rolled around, and you know you got a curfew at, at job core, so I was like, oh, "I gotta go to bed." Okay, so I went in. I went to the bathroom, took a shower, you know, made sure I was dressed when I came out. You know, and I went and crawled into bed, threw in my headphones, and I, I read myself to sleep. <laughs> the next morning, I heard bam, 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 bam on my door. I'm like, oh my god, what the hell? Right? And I get up and I run to the door and there's two girls. Um, one was named um, Grace and the other one was, um, I don't remember what the other one was. The girl like was a huger version that looked just like me. It was, she used to freak me out a little. I liked her though. Oh, her name was Cat. Anyway, so they're banging on my door and I open it up and I'm like, what? And they're like, oh, DF was trying to get a hold of you. And and he said that he broke your window. <laughs> I'm like, what? And they rushed in and they ran to the window and they looked and it looked like little BB holes on the exterior. <laughs> and and I'm like, I'm just like, oh my god, like, okay, so, um, they ran out to go get, uh, the lady who was on duty, you know, so, um, I looked over and <laughs> my roommate's boyfriend was still in the bedroom, <laughs> I was like, oh shit, <laughs> so I was like, you go get the bathroom and you just stay there. <laughs> just stay there. I'll make sure she doesn't come near the bathroom. <laughs> so we put him in the bathroom, right? <laughs> and uh, and then she came in and she's like, do you know why this window is broken? I have no idea who did it or why they did it. You know, I lied, right? She's like, okay. And she left. And then after she left and everything calmed down, I knocked on the bathroom door and I'm like, you gotta go. <laughs> so here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna walk out there and you're gonna throw this blanket over your head and look like a girl because you're clean shaven and if you throw it over your head you look like a girl anyway so you know and I went back into the office and I was talking to her about the manager lady about the stuff and as I was keeping her head away from my dorm room here comes my, my roommate's boyfriend slowly creeping down the hall dressed like a girl on a Sunday morning <laughs> or was it Saturday I don't know it was fucking funny <laughs> I'm over there sidetracking so that he can get out so he doesn't get in trouble. God, so, such a bad influence. <laughs> yeah, anyway, thank you so much for being part of our family and uh, joining me. And listening to me rant on. <laughs> I love you. I hope everything goes good and you're doing good, alright? If you ever need anything, I'm here. Bye, my beautiful friend.